This is the story of a pirate ship. Fire! Fire! Its mission was to capture, to sink, to destroy, to spread fear. Auf den Kaiser! Auf den Sieg! What began as a naval operation ended as a desperate voyage in the South Pacific. For the German crew, it was a voyage to the end of the world. So schnell fängt man einen Wolf nicht. The Odyssey of the Wolf began in the port city of Kiel. One man who has known the legend of the wolf all his life is the captain's grandson, Uwe Nerger. Mein Bruder und ich sind bereits als kleine Kinder mit dieser Geschichte konfrontiert worden, und wir sind damit aufgewachsen. Unser Vater erzählte uns von Karl August Nerger, von der SMS Wolf, dem schwarzen Schiff, dem Geisterschiff, das gesucht wurde und nicht gefunden wurde. Er erzählte uns von diesen helden Taten auf dem Schiff und den tollen Geschichten drumherum. Später haben wir natürlich erfahren, dass es nicht alles Heldentaten waren und sicherlich auch nicht alles toll, was da geschehen ist. Das ist eher eine Höllenfahrt gewesen. Ist. Irgendwann aber habe ich angefangen zu recherchieren. Ich wollte mehr wissen. Und so habe ich immer mehr Schritt für Schritt über die ganze Geschichte herausgefunden. The 30th of November 1916. An unremarkable steamship with a crew of 348 slipped out of Kiel. She was on a secret mission for Germany. For the mission, the captain had given the ship a new name, the Wolf. Geschütz abdecken. Sorgen Sie dafür, dass die Kanonen immer gut getarnt sind. Der Feind soll es schwierig haben, etwas anderes als einen harmlosen Frachter in der Wolf zu sehen. Nicht, dass jeder gleich sieht, wer wir sind. They have existed for as long as men have sailed the seven seas. Pirates. Under her merchant ship disguise, the Wolf was in fact a modern warship. On board, there were 10 guns, four torpedo tubes, and 465 naval mines. For reconnaissance, there was also a seaplane, the Little Wolf. It looked just like an ordinary freighter. There was nothing about it that suggested that this was a warship. And in fact, the entire mission was reliant on the fact that nobody would guess that it was an armed ship. Their mission took them to the far side of the world. The wolf sowed terror even in the waters off Sydney. Australian naval expert Peter Honan and journalist Richard Gilliatt are fascinated by the wolf, her tactics and her technology. The wolf really embarked on the most remarkable naval voyage of the First World War. This was a ship that sailed all the way from Germany to Australia and back, really on a suicide mission. I don't think anyone in the German Navy expected it to return. And in that 15 months, it traveled 64,000 miles without ever pulling into port. After years of research, yeah, they wrote a book about the wolf. Engineering, really, wasn't it? The way that they could um, change the appearance of the ship. Well, the design, a masterpiece for disguise to fool everyone. They could change the silhouette on the horizon by raising and lowering the masts. That's right, because there was no radar in those days. No. Ships were identified by just looking at the horizon and seeing the silhouette of them. They were popularly called the Kaiser's Pirates. Pirates because, like the pirates of old times, they had to survive by capturing enemy ships and they would plunder, steal. But the piracy really was that they could not afford to go into any port. Secrecy was the key to the whole success. Wissen Sie die britische Flagge? 
The captain of this maritime chameleon was Karl August Neger. Mein Befehl lautet, in fernen Meeren die feindliche Schiffer zu stören, Handelskrieg zu führen und andere Kriegsmaßnahmen. Wir sind Piraten des Kaisers. Das ist doch Wahnsinn, was wir hier machen. Was hat denn das mit Krieg zu tun, ha? One of the sailors on board was Theodor Plevier, 23 years old. The son of a laborer, he had wanted to become a writer, but had been made to enlist. He ended up on the wharf because he was arrested in a bar fight and uh, was offered the opportunity to go on this, on this voyage uh, as an alternative to spending time in prison. And he later wrote a very interesting account of not only his experiences, but of the war itself. The First World War had been raging since 1914. It had divided the world into two camps. The major trade routes over the world's oceans were controlled by the Allies, principally by the Royal Navy. An Allied blockade cut off every shipping route to and from Germany. On land, the armies were engaged in gruelling trench warfare. Millions of men died in the stalemate. The British fleet outmatched the Kaisers. Seeking to avoid a direct confrontation, the German Admiralty came up with a ruse. What if German raiders in disguise could break through the blockade? The advantage of the raiders was that they could um, sneak out past the British blockade, unlike the German Navy, which uh, once it came out would be confronted by a huge naval flotilla. That's why the German Navy surface ships very rarely left Germany during the First War. Altogether, 12 German raiders were sent out, but none got as far as the Wolf. Diese verdammte Blockade. Wie sollen wir da durchkommen? Die Engländer machen hier den Riegel zu. Wir werden unser Glück ganz nah entlang der Küste versuchen. Unser Befehl lautet, die feindliche Schifffahrt zu stören und Handelskrieg zu führen. In erster Linie werden wir Minen legen. I think the German Admiralty thought it had a very poor chance of success, but they wanted to do something daring to give the Allies a shock, a surprise. Eile Kraft voraus! Eile Kraft voraus! 10 Grad Steuerbord! 10 Grad Steuerbord. There were heavy fogs. It was well camouflaged, like a black cat at night, very hard to see. And through luck and the bad weather, they were able to sneak past the blockade. But you have to remember at all times, it was commanded by a first-class seaman. That seaman was Karl August Neger, 41. He was a frigate captain, a rank equivalent to commander in the Royal Navy. Das hier ist so das berühmteste Bild, was es eigentlich gibt, ist eine, eine Zeichnung. Das zeigt ihm direkt nach der Verleihung des Polymeritordens. Das ist ähm, als Druck veröffentlicht worden, das konnte man kaufen. Gab es dann auch mit Originalunterschrift hinten drauf. Das, was ich aus der Literatur entnommen habe und auch aus den Erzählungen in der Familie, ist ja bereits in sehr frühen Jahren als eine Art militärische Genie, als Navigationsgenie bezeichnet worden. Das heißt, er war jemand, der sich fast blind orientieren konnte und aufgrund seiner Navigationsfähigkeiten und seiner Intuition zu Dingen in der Lage waren, die Bewunderung hervorgerufen haben. But Neger was not an aristocrat, nor did he come from a naval family. 
he had four illegitimate children. So whilst they admired him, they thought, well, he's beneath us. He, he could probably do a good job of a, as a pirate, but he's expendable. The North Atlantic was the crew's first big test. Captain Neger noted in his diary, Unaufhörlich rollen die schweren Seen heran. Die Luft ist von Salzstaub erfüllt, das Schiff zittert unter der Wucht der Brecher. Die Temperatur sinkt erheblich. Wolf ist bald in Eis und Schnee gehüllt. Der Verkehr an Deck fast unmöglich. After 30 days at sea, they were headed south. Prussian officers took their leisure, while the crew toiled. Theodor Plivier could only put up with the class distinction by making a joke of it. There's steht da, der feine Pinke, mit seinem Farbkasten. Eine Malerei, da wird kein Schwein draus klug. Schade um die schöne Farbe. Hey, der müsste mal Kohle schleppen. <lacht> The Wolf was a modern steamship. Her boilers consumed 30 tons of coal a day. Captain Neger had one major worry. Die Kohle. Sie spielt in meinen Plänen stets die führende Rolle. Geht sie zu Ende, ohne dass es mir gelingt, neue zu erbeuten, dann ist es mit dem Kreuzerkrieg aus. In the fifth week at sea, and still undetected, the wolf made it across the Atlantic. Alle mal klar zum Gefecht. Geben Sie Alarm. Mannschaft angetreten. Das war eine Übung. Zwei Minuten sieben Sekunden. Das ist mir zu langsam. Die Männer müssen schneller werden. Ihnen muss klar werden, dass im Ernstfall jede Sekunde über Leben und Tod entscheiden kann. Übung Ende. Rührt euch. Keiner liebt den Kapitän. Er liest Kant und Schopenhauer und ist der einsamste Mensch an Bord. Mit niemand, nicht mal den Offizieren, pflegt er gesellschaftlichen Verkehr und sie spotten oft über ihn. Und der soll über uns kommandieren. Wegtreten! Nurga ran a very, very tight ship. And I think that was partly out of necessity because his crew were not the elite of the German Navy. They were really merchant seamen, Navy reservists and a bunch of misfits, really. And to turn them into an efficient military crew, he drilled them for months and months and months. After six weeks at sea, the wolf crossed the equator. The traditional crossing of the line ceremony came as a welcome change. In honor of Neptune, the crew were baptized. Off the coast of South Africa, several important Allied trade routes converged. The ship's company switched to tropical uniform, and now they were ready to lay their first mines. Hier müssen wir die Dinger platzieren. Da müssen sie rein und raus. Wir können nur hoffen, dass wir dabei nicht entdeckt werden. 
Wir werden ahnungslos in ihr Verderben fahren. Cape Town was one of the key ports of the British Empire. Troop ships and supply ships sailed regularly from the Cape, bound for England. No one suspected the danger lurking beneath the waves. The wolf laid 50 mines, a dangerous exercise so close to shore. Using the naval slang for mines, Neger noted in his diary, Wir legen noch am selben Abend die bekannten Höllenmaschinen, deren Berührung für Schiffe äußerst peinlich sein soll. Nicht lange und unsere Höllenmaschinen werden wirken. The mine laying was quite successful though because a number of ships uh, almost immediately hit these mines including a British military ship uh, and so that was the first time that the wolf caused damage for the Allied navies. One of the mines sank the Spanish passenger steamer Carlos de Zahire. A hundred and twenty people lost their lives. Es ging darum, tatsächlich Angst zu verbreiten. Die Angst, ich kann gar nicht mehr aus dem Hafen auslaufen, ohne die Gefahr sehen zu müssen, dass ich auf eine Mine laufe und vielleicht das Schiff versenke und viele Menschenleben riskiere. Angst war, glaube ich, das erste Ziel dieser Mission. A sad goal in a murderous war. After 80 days at sea, the wolf set course for Ceylon. The crew felt just one thing, utter boredom. A test of patience in the middle of a war. Immer dasselbe. Wasser und Wolken. Wenn man bloß mal an Land könnte, in so ein Fandango-Haus rein. Ein einziges Mal mit einer in die Betten. Oder wenigstens durch eine Straße schieben. Abends, wenn alle Lichter brennen. Oder, oder auf einer Straßenbahn fahren, wenn voll besetzt ist. Ja, rechts und links und vorn und überall Weiber. Bloß einmal diesen Geruch in die Nase kriegen. Twelve days after leaving Cape Town, the wolf reached her next area of operations. Colombo, the capital of Ceylon. In 1916, the island was a British crown colony. Cargo streamed out of the port of Colombo, bound for England. Ceylon's main strategic export was rubber, vital to the British war effort. But another very important export was tea. Early on the 17th of February, 1917, a ship steamed out of Colombo. To the captain, the war in Europe seemed a long way away. Of course, mines were not discerning. They couldn't tell who was going to hit them. The ships were crammed with supplies, but at the same time, they took passengers as well. The stricken ship was the SS Worcestershire. A hundred years later, 60 meters down, her wreck is a reminder of the wolf's reign of terror. Kapitän, hier ist der Funkspruch, den wir aus Colombo abgefangen haben. Hm. Unser erster Minentreffer direkt vor Ihrem Hafen. Die Alliierten werden sich fragen, warum da plötzlich Schiffe sinken. Ne? Danke, abtreten. Jawohl. Hm. 
Minen zu legen war eine Sache, klar, aber Minen versorgen mich nicht. Ich komme nicht weiter. Ich sehe, die Kohlebunker werden immer leerer, immer leerer. Die Versorgungslage wird schlechter. Ich, habe, ich brauche Frischwasser, ich brauche Nahrungsmittel. Ich muss die Mannschaft, die, die, die äh, Menschen an Bord versorgen. Ich brauche also Schiffe, die ich kapern kann. In order to detect Allied vessels, the Wolf was fitted with one of the most modern radio systems of the time. Its sole purpose was to intercept enemy messages. The Wolf herself did not broadcast a single message. It would have been suicide. Within hours, she would have been targeted by British warships. The ship's seaplane, used for reconnaissance, was affectionately dubbed Little Wolf. While they still had mines on the ship, any shell from a, a, an Allied ship would finish them off. They'd all be blown up to hell. And that's why Plivia called it the Hell Cruiser. Nerga didn't want to take any risks. The Wolf was heavily armed, but had barely any armor. Every attack could be a danger to themselves. Unarmed ships sailing on their own were easy prey. Geschützgefechts bereit machen! So eine Kanone ist so eine Sache. Die Hand am Abzugseil, ruckzuck, ist die Hand zur Faust geworden und haut am Horizont ins Schiffdeck hinein. Du hast auch so eine Hand. Nur an das, was hinterher kommt. Daran darf man nicht denken. Ich habe Wasserleichen gesehen. Die waren aufgetrieben wie Kuhbäuche. Entfernung eine Meile. Geschwindigkeit acht Knoten. Ein Brite. Der Gute scheint zu glauben, einen Landsmann begrüßen zu können. Lassen Sie die Flagge hissen. Hissen Sie die Flagge. Wir nähern uns, hissen Kriegsflagge und Wimpel und machen Signal. Ein Schuss vor den Bug. Ein Schuss vor den Bug. Feuer! Das Erstaunen auf der anderen Seite ist wohl ziemlich groß. Ich muss gestehen, dass ich darauf keine Rücksicht nehme. Natürlich war die Freude groß. Man bekam Kohle. Man bekam Wasser, man bekam frische Vorräte und konnte die Mission nur deshalb überhaupt weiterführen. At the end of February 1917, the Wolf captured the British ship Taratella, along with seven prisoners. Endlich Kohle. Ich lasse die Gefangenen an Bord bringen. Jawohl. Theodore Plevier had already decided, this war was senseless. Was, wenn der Krieg vorbei ist? Ha? Wenn Deutschland gewonnen hat? In mein Seesack ist nicht größer geworden und mehr Heuer bekomme ich auch nicht. Ich suche ein Schiff und fahre. Alles bleibt wie vorher. Das ist Schwindel. Das sage ich dir. I think the unknown state of affairs. Nerga didn't tell them where they were going or when they were going home was all completely unknown and I think that affected their morale. The captured Taratella was put under German command, loaded with mines and ordered to do as much damage as possible in the Gulf of Aden. That ship actually got caught while it was trying to lay mines, and the crew aboard it had seen the wolf and had seen the wolf chin. The German replacement crew of the Taratella were closely questioned. And so around about February, March 1917, the British became aware 
that there was another raider at large and it had been um, in the Indian Ocean. That was about the extent of what they knew uh, because although they interrogated the German crew, they really didn't get very much information from them. Patrols were sent to stop the wolf. But the raider was not to be found. The wolf left a trail of destruction. The flaps came down, the gun swung out, boom. The ships were plundered and sunk. And aboard the wolf, there were more and more prisoners. Friend and foe alike were packed in like sardines. Sterben die Leute da. Das sind Ananas, Herr Kapitän. Halt! Alles, was wir kapern, ist Staatseigentum. Wer sich daran vergreift, begeht Diebstahl. Und wenn nach dieser Warnung dabei ertappt wird, dann will ich eine Ra aufbaumen lassen. Die Kisten kommen in die Offiziersmesse. Habt ihr nicht gehört? Nach oben damit! The German Navy was not a happy operation at this time because there was a very big division between the officers and the men below them. The officers lived quite well and came from money, a lot of them, and as the war went on, resentment built up about this. It became a ticking time bomb. Plevier couldn't stand it any longer. Warmes Wasser mit Grün. Weiter nichts. Im eigenen Bauch schwappt die Suppe. Das kann man nicht immer aushalten. Kein Wunder. Nach so einer Suppe braucht man nicht mal auf den Lokus. Das pisst und schwitzt man weg. It was a class system in those days. And the men were treated, certainly in Wolf, um, we know that very badly compared to the officers. Kann man so durchgehen lassen, oder? <lacht> Meine Herren, wir haben ein gutes Dutzend Schiffe versenkt und dem Feind einen empfindlichen Schlag versetzt. Ich erhebe mein Glas auf den Kaiser, auf den Sieg. Auf den Kaiser, auf den Sieg! It was a mirror of German society of the time. The officers held fast to the old order, to the Kaiser, to tradition. <laughs> On the 1st of March, the wolf spotted a British steamer bound for Ceylon, the Jumna. Wenn der da drüben seine erste Salve abfeuert, dann jump ich über Bord. Da hast du doch nichts von. Das nicht, aber die anderen haben auch nichts von und können keine Reklame damit machen. Ich pfeife auf den Helden tot. Die Kanone ist beladen worden und bevor sie überhaupt ausgeschwenkt wurde, bevor die, die Schottwand runtergeklappt wurde, ist gezündet worden. It literally backfired, it exploded and blew out all over the gunners. And the several were bad, well, killed outright and some were badly wounded and died in the hospital. Es war natürlich eine katastrophale Situation. Das ist auch wirklich ein Schockzustand gewesen, was man auch in der Literatur lesen kann, wo ähm, tja, viele vollkommen verzweifelt waren. For the Kaiser, to the far side of the world. The wolf laid minefields off New Zealand and Australia.
Peter Honan and Richard Gilliatt have reconstructed the route. It brought the wolf within a few hundred kilometres of Sydney. Australia had sent all of its warships and troops overseas. Australia was essentially completely defenceless at that point. And for the people in Australia to be aware of the fact that there was a raider off the coast would have caused an absolute uh, outcry. The government spread rumours about German saboteurs. The newspapers reported ships sinking for unexplained reasons. Myths were circulated. The Allies knew by now about the German raider, but they couldn't find him. After he left Australian and New Zealand waters, he headed up to New Guinea, and my great uncle shipped the SS Matanga. It was uh, captured because the little Walshen spotted it coming in. The, this was in August 1917. One of the prisoners was Alexander Ross Ainsworth. Peter Honan's great-uncle. The newspapers called the ship's disappearance a mystery. It disappeared in an oceanic earthquake. That was the nonsense that the government put around. It just disappeared. The Matunga didn't just disappear. She was captured by the wolf. Der ergibt sich. Machen Sie alles klar zum Entern. Jawohl, Herr Kapitän. The difficulty of being the captain of a commerce raider was you were attacking civilian ships, and so you were not allowed to kill the people whose ship you were attacking. Under the rules of warfare, you had to keep the people that you've captured alive. So the wolf became a floating prison for hundreds of people. With every ship they captured, the number grew. A group of people thrown together by destiny, far from home. Many of the prisoners later wrote about their great respect for the Wolf's crew and for Nurga and um, and for the doctor as well. And they wrote letters and they kept in touch after the war. They wrote postcards to one another. One of the prisoners from the Matunga stood out, a young Australian woman, Rose Flood. This is natürlich klar. There are mit den Gefangenen zusammen einige hundert Männer an Bord. Und dann kommt da mit einmal eine Frau, eine sehr hübsche junge Frau, die auch durchaus mit ihren Reizen kokettiert. Willkommen an Bord. Herr Kapitän. Mein Großvater hat schon von Anfang an gesehen, das ist schon ein gewisses, man könnte sagen, Konfliktpotenzial. For her amusement, games were organised on deck. One of the officers later commented about the fact that her sound of her silk stockings conjured a, you know, thousand fantasies aboard the, aboard the wolf. The Kaiser's pirates also had children as hostages, like the little American girl, Juanita Cameron. There were animals on the ship, you know, there were Dachshunds, there were cats, there were pigs. And so she treated the ship like an adventure playground and she just roamed around it, befriending the crew. Juanita was soon known as the menace on board. Miss Fräulein, abtreten. And even Nurga, who was a fairly kind of stern person, uh, was completely smitten with Juanita and would allow her in his cabin and, um, and, ch and chatted to her. New Guinea, the 
The wolf had spent 250 days at sea. The natives were curious. They had never seen anything like this before. Nerga took refuge among remote island groups, but it gave him a false sense of security because the Allies were on his track. Herr Kapitän, ein Funkspruch! Circa 100 Meter langer Dampfer, grau, zwei Schornsteine mit dem Namen Wolf, ist ein deutsches Kaperschiff. Achtung, der derzeitige Standort ist vor der Küste Papua-Neuguineas. Wir bitten alle Informationen über die Sichtung des Schiffes. Solange wir Funkstille bewahren, können Sie uns nicht orten. Sollen wir doch versuchen, uns zu schnappen. So schnell fängt man einen Wolf nicht. The Allies were still chasing a phantom, but the hunter had become the hunted. Nerga knew that the risk of being cornered was growing with every passing day. It just shows he was totally dedicated to the task and obviously thought about his wife and family, as many of them did. But uh, the mission came first and foremost. But the, the men down below would not have shared that dedication or devotion to duty. <laughs> to the delight of the officers, the booty from one prize was a supply of alcohol. Thirty thousand kilometers from home, the Odyssey continued. Then, they underestimated a harmless-looking Japanese steamer. At this time in the war, many civilian freighters were armed, and in fact, were, were instructed not to be, uh, not to let themselves be captured. And the Japanese captain of the Hitachi Maru seems to have taken these orders completely literally. Is that wahnsinnig? Der will auf uns feiern! Which was absolutely suicidal sort of thing to do because the wolf was just so heavily armed and they had this puny little um, cannon. Geben Sie einen Schuss auf die Brücke. Jawohl. Geschütz eins klar machen. And so Nerga really had no choice but to open fire. Fire! There were quite a few casualties on the Hitachi Maru, and Nerga sounded quite regretful about that, and he was completely perplexed as to why the Japanese captain had done it. The survivors from the Hitachi Maru were brought aboard. Their ship was plundered and sunk. Every new capture brought a mixture of fear and elation to the strange community on the wolf. The Japanese captain, Seizo Tominaga, could not bear the disgrace of suffering capture. He took the only way out. Er 
ist einfach über Bord gesprungen. In einem Moment, in dem es niemand gesehen hat. Dieser Kapitän war einfach am nächsten Morgen nicht mehr da und niemand wusste, wo er geblieben ist. Jeder Kapitän durfte ein paar persönliche Sachen mitnehmen. Das ist nicht so, dass man alles beschlagnahmt und gesagt hat, das gehört jetzt zu uns, sondern man durfte ein paar Teile behalten. Und dieser Buddha gehörte zu seinem persönlichen Besitz. Der Buddha ist noch da, der Kapitän war eines Morgens verschwunden. On the ships they captured, the raiders sometimes found another highly prized form of booty. Newspapers. They were Neger's only link with world events. Alliierte gewinnen an der Westfront. Briten stoßen in Flandern vor. Die Kommunisten reißen in Russland die Macht an sich. November 1917. The Bolshevik coup in Russia would reverberate in world affairs for decades. On the Western Front, the war was still consuming millions of lives. Deutschland erleidet große Verluste. Neger sensed that Germany was no longer what it had been when he left it. Below decks, the men had more urgent concerns. Theodor Plivier was worried. Und jetzt fängt es auch bei mir an. Vorläufig sind's kleine Täschchen um die Zähne herum. Anderen fallen die Zähne aus und das Fleisch wird locker. Und im Lazarett liegen ein paar Portugiesen aus dem Gefangenendeck mit geschwollenen Beinen. Wenn die Ärzte den Finger auf die Schenkel legen, drücken sich Löcher ein. Und? Den Männern fehlt es an Vitaminen. Die haben es kaputt. Wir werden bald viele Tote haben. Der Feind zwingt uns in die Knie, sondern das verdammte Fressen. By the time Nurgur had been at sea for about 13 months, he had about 750 people on the ship. Um, there were about 350 odd crew and about 400 prisoners. Huge overcrowding, and he had to feed them all and keep them healthy. Now it was really a matter of life and death. Meine Herren, wir haben mehr erreicht, als ich erhofft hatte. Der Kaiser wird stolz auf uns sein. Aber nur, wenn wir am Leben bleiben. Setzen Sie Kurs in die Heimat. Auf die Heimat. Auf die Heimat. Auf die Heimat. A voyage of 25,000 kilometers lay ahead of them. The final chapter in a desperate expedition. Below decks, Plivier was helping shovel the dwindling supply of coal. Das ist wirklich der letzte Rest. Bald kommen wir nicht mehr. Die Verzweiflung war wirklich groß. Man war tausende Seemeilen von der Heimat entfernt. Man wusste ohnehin nichts mehr von der Heimat, hat nichts mehr gehört. Und jetzt saß man da und hatte keine Kohlen mehr. Es musste einfach ein Schiff kommen. They cruised back and forth for a week, until a suitable prey came along. Das Schiff hat 6200 Tonnen Kohle geladen. Das ist einfach großartig. Haben Sie alles bereit, um umzuladen? Die Heimreise. Das ist sicher. Ja, Herr Kapitän. Sehr gern. The coal on the Spanish steamer Igots Mendy was their ticket home. The coal 
had to be transferred on the high seas. A storm lasting several days added to the difficulties. It was a dangerous manoeuvre. The wolf began taking on water. They were just crashing into one another and the water was rushing in. And this was one of the things that really concerned the crew as this voyage uh, came to its end was that the wolf was really quite badly bashed up. The holes in the ship's side were plugged. Her boilers stoked. Theodore Plevier had had more than enough of the class system in the Navy. So an officer, huh? Da sein Gehalt einsteckt, eine Wohnung am Land hat und niemals etwas entbehrte. Wenn ich so eine blau rasierte Fresse sehe. Egal was, alle verdienen sie, alle haben sie ihre Dividenden erhöht. Dafür schuften wir. Dafür hungern wir und dafür gehen wir kaputt. A lot of the cynicism was about the fact that it was perceived that uh, people were profiting from the war, freight companies and armaments companies, uh, while millions of people were being slaughtered. And this was certainly Plivia's point of view. He, he became a communist, really, as a result of his experiences in the war and his experiences on the wolf. It wasn't only the Allied blockade that posed a threat to the Wolf's passage home. Their own navy posed a danger as well. The German U-boats were still active and they were torpedoing any freighter that they came across. And there was nothing about the wolf to, to denote that it was a German warship. And so they were vulnerable both to the British Navy and, ironically, to the German Navy. And so uh, there was no expectation, I think, amongst the crew that they had a real, real chance of getting back. But Nurga's luck, which had been extraordinary throughout the voyage, held out. What soll das für eine Blockade sein? Kein einziges britisches Schiff in Sicht. Volle Kraft voraus, 15 Grad Backbord. Volle Kraft voraus, 15 Grad Backbord. Bald sind wir zu Hause. So he was able to pass through and into, um, into port. And when he transmitted his signal to the German Navy command, there was just complete disbelief. After 451 days at sea, the Wolf returned to Kiel in February 1918. Her arrival caused a sensation. It was a happy ending after the ordeal. Damit hat wohl niemand gerechnet. Die Wolf kehrt wirklich zurück. She brought with her 467 prisoners from all over the world and plunder worth more than 40 million marks. A fortune. Nur wenige Tage bevor die Wolf völlig überraschend im Heimathafen eingelaufen ist, hat die Admiralität die Angehörigen informiert, dass die SMS Wolf aufgegeben ist. Dass man davon ausgeht, dass sie nicht mehr zurückkommt, dass sie versenkt worden ist und dass alle Beteiligten gestorben sind. The Kaiser's pirates had sailed 120,000 kilometers, sowing terror and sinking 30 ships. But they had not altered the course of the war. Sending congratulations, the Kaiser said, Germany needs many more such heroes. Nerga became a hero in a war that was now hopeless for Germany. Es war natürlich eine Ehre, 
ohnegleichen für Carlos Nerger und auch für die Mannschaft. Denn das, diese Orden äh, ging an die ganze Mannschaft. Der Polymerit war für ihn, aber natürlich ist die gesamte Mannschaft auch mit den Eisernen Kreuzen und so weiter ausgezeichnet worden. Für viele war das eine Ehre, aber auch nicht für alle. Everything was changing in Germany. The war and the class system were both being questioned, ashore and on the wolf. In November 1918, at the end of the war, mutiny broke out at Kiel. Theodor Plevier would join it. The fall of the Kaiser and the end of the German monarchy were now inevitable. Plevier himself would become an agitator for revolution. His old dream would come true. He went on to become a best-selling author, using his books to describe the futility of war. Even as a pirate of the Kaiser. <laughs> 